handcuffs. They said, let us not catch around here again, boy. And they let me go. And I'm like, whoa, what's really going on now? So I'll walk back to that corner and I walk back down towards that, where that house was, walk past that house, and guess who I see sitting on the porch of not one, but maybe two houses away from that abandoned house? Deaver? That man, Deaver. <laughs> and he's looking out as I'm walking by and he sees me and he's smiling. He says, hey, come here. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. You know, I mean, I had nowhere else to go. What am I going to do, right? <laughs> so this dude, he's like, come on in. Hey, let's have something to eat. So I went ahead and went on inside. You know, you got some food. I'll eat some food. Let's, let's, let's eat. <laughs> so we're eating. And uh, this man, Deaver, he brought out some food. I forget exactly what we're eating. Um so we're eating a little bit of food. During this whole time, I'm eating whatever. He's eating a little bit. We had a bite to eat. He uh, talks to me about Jesus. And uh, at that time, I had prayed a prayer with Deaver about, you know, asking Jesus to be my Lord and Savior and all this stuff. And he laid his hand on my head and he prayed some prayer prayers for me and stuff. And some more demons had come out of me and things. And um, that was my introduction to Jesus, if you will. And then, you know, life goes on from there. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of just a short, quick, you know, summary of where that came about. And How old were you at that, at that time? At that time, I was probably around 13, 14. So you were still little. You were just 13, fresh 14, to the streets. Fresh to the streets, fresh to that um, whole thing. But always had, I had, even before all that, I had always been very uh, spiritual. Um, without having had been a believer, Christian, whatever, I mm -hmm. had always seen in the spirit, if you will, uh, always seen demons and what people would call apparitions or ghosts or ghostly figures or shadows or movements or something. Always saw, I, I, I saw, see, can see, right? Like, um, there was a time where the house that I had been brought to, where the people had adopted me. I lived down in this bottom level of this house, and there was this other house that was up at the top level. Well, one day I had um, been down down at this lower level, cutting the grass as a young kid, um, maybe 10, maybe? 10, maybe 11, not sure exactly, exact date. I'd have to really think about it. I was out there cutting grass and I looked up at where this other house was, which was all connected to this family. And I had looked up there and I had seen this dumb demon figure. It was, it was ghostly demon figure walking around up at that stairwell, came down went back up the stairwell and then flashed into the house. And well, in that house was one of their family members, their uncle, which would have been their brother or something. He had died of cancer at that moment that that flash happened. Whoa. And so what am I saying all that for? I'm saying all that to say that, so I had always had some awareness, spiritual awareness or something. So I had some encounters with Jesus off and on, uh, even before I had become born again different encounters with Jesus, different encounters with believing in God and stuff. Jesus stopped you from killing he one did. of your sexual assaulters. He did. He? So while living in that adopted family's home, this one particular night, um, I was not in my right mind. I was, I, I, I can't describe it other than I was not in my right mind. Um, and no kid that's being assaulted is in the right, the right mind. mind. Fair enough. That's true. So, you know, you're always trying to take care of yourself since nobody else is taking yeah, care of me, right? Gotta so, protect yourself. Well, this one particular night, um, I had had about enough. I had been sexually assaulted by their actual biological child. And this was over a period of time, it wasn't just one incident, but 
it had grown to a certain point where this assault kept happening as a young child that I had had about enough. Well, I yeah. had access. Well, they had actually kept me in a locked room. Oh, jeez. Well, I figured out how to get out of that room, right? <laughs> so I broke out of that room, and, well, I happened to go to the kitchen and found a nice, big, long butcher knife. So I managed to get back into the room, and, well, they didn't know that I knew how to get out of the room, out of their locked situation, and into their locked rooms. Well, <laughs> I managed to get into their locked room. So this uh, adopted brother, he was there in his room, sleep. He was asleep, and my plan that night was to go in and jab this knife into this adopted brother over and over and over again until I got my revenge. Yeah. So I walked into that room, and not as bright a light as I had talked about earlier, but a bright light shone in that room, and this angelic figure... Uh, it, I did, couldn't make out what, what this was, but I knew that now I know that it was an angelic being had presented itself and this force field was like thrown my way, so to speak. And it just went, whoa, and, uh, forced me back out of that room. The door was open cause I had walked in that room. The door had been open and this force field just, wow, just pushed me back it didn't push me over it just pushed me back and out of the room and when that happened i was like whoa what just happened right like i just entered right. into the twilight zone or something so i closed the door the brother never woke up never was made aware of this situation happening was never made none the wiser that this had actually happened but I believe that if I had actually went through with that and actually did that, that I probably would not be here today talking about this yeah, situation. Yeah, they killed you. Yeah, it'd been, it'd been done and over. So yeah, there, there was that that had happened. Um, so always there had always been some kind of supernatural activity that occurred around me. Like, even as a kid, it was almost like, you know, the forces of darkness was, were looking to take me out. Yeah. Because I had some, you know, ring you were or something. Born with my a precious. Purpose. You know, I mean, I don't, you were born, born with, with a purpose, purpose yes. for the Lord. You're right. You're born for such a time as this, Brother Brian. Yes, yes. So since you were a little baby, the devil's been trying to take you out. Yes. Which is probably why. He prompted your mom to kidnap you from your aunt and yes. take you to California. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and I think even in her disabled state of mind, mm -hmm. she knew enough to let you go. Yeah. But then you just got caught in their ring. The network yeah. that these satanic people yes. have yes. is huge. It is absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. And because we're not taught about it, mm -hmm. we're unaware mm -hmm. until we are aware. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you were in this stuff at 13, they're teaching you... 13, 14, 15 on up. Mm -hmm. They're teaching you all about the witchcraft and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you're 13, you, you this man of God comes in after the angel of the Lord right. comes in and you give your life to Jesus, well, what happened the next day? <laughs> so, well, now, what happened after that now, like, so I, I, I did the Jesus thing and stuff. I didn't quite give up all the stuff that I had been doing at that time because I didn't really have anywhere else to go or anything. Still I mean, homeless. Still homeless, still living on the streets, still having to take care of myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to protect myself, still trying to do all this stuff. So I had this encounter with a Jesus, with with the power of God, with the angels of the Lord. And so I had already been impressed with this truth, right? Already impressed with this demonstration of God. The power that, of God. You know, he, 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 he is there. He is evident. He is real. Much more realer and much more powerful than anything else you were dabbling with over here. Yeah. So I had that encounter. So, well, anyway, what happened on later on down the line, ended up getting kidnapped a couple of times. 
um, during this whole course of things happening in my life. Oh my gosh, kidnapped um, by who? Kidnapped several different times, actually. Well, oh, before I had actually got to Hollywood, I got kidnapped by somebody. My bike broke down once I actually got to downtown LA. It was down by Alvera Street. So then from downtown LA, my plan was to try to um, uh, hitchhike or walk the rest of the way to Hollywood, which wasn't too much further, but far enough that the bike broke down, so I couldn't do anything with the bike. So anyhow, so I'm walking through Alvera Street, come out on the other side, and there was this car parked uh, off to the side of the street and waves to me and says, come on, come on. And yeah, take my backpack and I walk up. Come on, get in. And uh, so I got on, got got in the vehicle. I thought this person was going to take me where I wanted to go, right? So we're getting it. I got in the vehicle and so he starts driving off. It was a manual transmission. So he's having to shift gears. I remember this. And this person's shifting gears and uh, starts doing some talking and turns to me and uh, starts putting his hand on my leg and starts rubbing rubbing up my leg and starts getting a little too close, oh, right? Oh, jeez. And he says to me, he says, you know what we're going to go do, right? And I'm like freaking out. So I reached into my bag to my backpack and pulled out a big old monkey wrench that I had in there. Bam! Hit him across the face after we were at a stoplight. And... Uh, jammed that stick shift down, jumped out of the car, rolled out of the car. There's cars behind him honking now. And, you know, just a big old mess. Doors open, and I'm running at this point. And uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's, Eesh, that, that, was, was that, that was one one um, kidnapping situation that I had faced. But, wow. yes, there were several times things like that had happened. Um, Good thing you took a weapon with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably stole that one. Never know when you're going to get a you, flat tire. You're right. You never know when you need a monkey wrench. <laughs> wow. So, uh, so now when it comes into the whole Harry Potter thing, witchcraft thing, whatever, what what is it that I'm trying to say by all this? Well, I'm, I'm not trying to qualify myself because, you know, I mean, nobody can qualify anybody except for God, right? So he's the one that qualifies us. Um, all I can say is that experientially, all I can say is that from what I have known, what I have seen, what I've walked through, what I've, uh, witnessed, um, uh, some of the things that we are today facing, um, there are things that are happening on a constant basis, you know, things that we have no explanations for. Yeah. And, well, I have an explanation for it and it is of a spiritual nature. Yes. And because we don't understand things spiritually, we can't associate it with anything. Therefore, we think it's something different or we attribute it to something else. Yeah. But we never associate it with this or that. And, you know, we want to make things, you know, uh, more than it really is. But but the reality is, it's either God or Satan. Or Satan. Yeah. And you were put into a unique situation at 13 through, what, 15, that you were kind of adopted again by a group of Satanists right. and people that took witches and right. warlocks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they taught you right. their stuff. Right. So now you can quantify things from a, let's say, professional level. Okay. Because if you've had the education, uh, it makes you a professional. Right. Okay. Right? You're okay. qualified. Fair enough. So when you read these Harry Potter books. I didn't read the books. I watched or, the well, movies. When you, right. when you watched yes. the movies, right. you recognized. I recognized and I heard and I observed and I witnessed a lot of the same things that they are um, passing off as fantasy, passing off yeah. as a as a nice little movie, mm -hmm. is actually um, words taken from actual 
um, manuals and books that are used by practitioners to teach people uh, different varying degrees of magic and witchcraft. So and they're actually speaking spells in these most books and movies. Absolutely, most definitely. Anytime you hear them, they're actually straight up doing this. And teaching kids. And teaching them how to perform how to, them. How to how to kill your parents. Yeah. And how to... Protect yourself, cloak yourself to help you get away from being deceptive with your parents. And and how to put spells on people Correct. to have them do what you want. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's... That's what I've been telling people. And they don't want to listen. My sister-in-law told me that she had two nephews named Philip. One was my son. One was her husband's sister's son. Mm -hmm. And she said that, oh, they got all the Harry Potter books for their Philip. Mm. And I said, you know, those things are demonic, right? They teach them actual witchcraft spells. She goes, anything that gets a kid to read has to be good. And I said... Mm you're going to give them the satanic bible because you basically have Mm. now not saying it has anything to do with it but my sister-in-law has passed away Mm. within a year of that and her philip her nephew other nephew philip his mother got deathly ill and it was right after he told Linda, that he was going to do a spell for his mom to die because she was being mean to him. Wow. From the Harry Potter books. Mm. Now, you know, I'm not saying that my kid's better than that kid, but my child was never allowed to read the Harry Potter books or to watch the Harry Potter movies. And the one Harry Potter book he received went straight into the trash. Mm -hmm. And... He was a good kid up until he was an adult and started watching the Harry Potter movies with an ex-girlfriend. Then he went a little astray. But hey, when you're an adult, you're responsible for yourself. It's not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. But saying all that, those books and those movies Mm -hmm. are how-tos. Yeah. It's like watching satanic and witchcraft porn. Mm. And they're addictive. Or satanic DIY. (laughs) Right? And they're addictive to the kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I have watched the Lord of the Rings and tried to figure that out. I mean, the Lord's had me watching Lord of the Rings for four years. Because there's a message he wants me to learn in there. Mm. And even watching that, I I made sure I didn't repeat anything that they were saying in their little gibberish language mm. on screen because I felt like there was something in that that was not right. Mm. And there's there's a lot of a lot of the Bible of the battle of good against evil in there. Mm. And they try to blur the lines between uh, wizards being good, then they have wizards that are bad. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm an adult and I'm watching this and I'm trying to figure it out because I, I'm led to. But it's, it's along the line of the Harry Potter stuff. It It all makes kids think and even adults think that these things that the Bible specifically says have no part in witchcraft or wizardry, Mm -hmm. Satanism, Mm -hmm. uh, mediums, fortune tellers, Mm -hmm. none of that. Mm -hmm. And yet people are going along with that. And they got that medium show on TV where this woman's, all these people are going to her to tell them, their future or tell them what happened to a loved one. And they don't realize that these people are not clairvoyant. 
they're listening to the demons associated with this person's lives, the familiar spirits that have followed these people around who know about these people's families, yeah. and they're telling this person, the person's just talking to demons. Mm -hmm. It's It just it, it blows my mind. Mm. So this whole Harry Potter thing, you're watching these movies, and what's the Lord telling you? Well... Well, I mean, like, I mean, I watched them, um, and I, well, <coughs> excuse me, I, you know, I mean, I watched them, um, I felt led to watch them, see if they were actually using these for the purposes that I had thought they were, had been using them for, which I yep. find out they are and were, um, well, I wouldn't say that God had been telling me anything, maybe what he had showed me was he would show me at that time um, that the satanic revival had begun um, during the time that they had begun to release those movies that the satanic revival had begun. And if we were to trace back to that time, we would look throughout the history uh, of that time where um, certain events started happening uh, on a massive level. Um, where, um, it, as it were, darkness was seemingly taken over the world, so to speak. Yeah. And you can see the progression of that. You can see the progression of things. Um, even when you look at, I mean, if I dare say the uh, Obama era, the Obama era, the Obama administration, you can see it was during the Obama administration time, if I were to say that, that when the whole CERN activity started really peaking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that also, um, it's been known to have been used to, um, break open this barrier between the underworld, if you will, the dark world, the, the demonic, the yeah. demonic world, mm -hmm. and <laughs> excuse me, <Come> on. <coughs> where it had, um, maybe, uh, if you will, altered, uh, a rip in that space-time continuum, if you will. Yeah. If I were to use science fiction verbs. Oh, no, I totally agree. Mm. When they flipped the switch on that thing, I started praying it would blow up before it caused the damage that the devil wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there used to be this uh, platform called Live Leak. It no longer exists, but on Live Leak, you could go on there with uh, videos that were leaked all over the world with people who would take footage of this that, and the other. I mean, this was even beyond YouTube, beyond any of the video platforms. This was live leak, you know, somebody robbing a store, like somebody went and robbed the store and recorded themselves and posted that video. Jeez. So this live leak, you would see people um, doing all this stuff. But on this live leak TV that they had, um, You would see these different uh, um, situations happening with CERN. Somebody that was witnessing different activities, uh, ritual ceremonies happening before that they had... Um, the ritual sacrifice right, there, yeah, yeah. All the stuff that was going on. Yeah. And That's you can, frightening. And, and it was shortly after that where... Um, I think it was even during the Sat uh, during the Satan administration, the Obama it, same administration. Thing. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Um, the uh, I forget what I was going to say. The live leak, seeing all the, the rituals. You, you see, and the yeah, the the sat Satanist group started suddenly uh, emerging, mm -hmm. where it was now no longer, um, you know. Uh, Hush, hush, let's not talk about that. Oh, you're, you you do that Satan stuff. Now it's more widely accepted. The the witchcraft, the, the, the magic, the all the stuff, it's now, all these things are now more uh, widely accepted. And if you name the name Jesus, if you name the name God, you are immediately silenced and you are shut up and shut down and yeah. you cannot say anything. It's like, uh, look, if I'm going to accept 
you and your lifestyle and your way of doing things and you're going to accept me if i'm going to tolerate you you're going to tolerate me yeah period yeah so you know they say you know we as believers christians we need to be tolerant of you know this that and the other thing mm -hmm. i'm sorry like i'll be tolerant and i'll accept you doing whatever you're doing even though i don't have to agree with it i'm not gonna bother <clears throat> you leave me alone but you had better also in like manner, show me the same mutual respect. And well, if, they have no respect. And if we can't show that mutual tolerance of each other, you know, we're going to have the chaos and confusion like we see happening today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, I totally agree. I mean, back in the Obozo administration, that's, that's about when I... Saw the first videos. Well, it was towards the end of it that I saw the first videos of the um, Christ uh, Church um, children, and I'm saying that so I don't get whatever. <laughs> but that's when I saw those little ones giving their account of what was happening to them every day when they were <coughs> dropped off at daycare at the church. Wow. And I don't know, did, did I send you those? Did you see those? I'm not sure. I don't remember. They were living with their mom. Their mom would drop them off at daycare. And when the administrator saw that their mom was gone, then their dad would come through the tunnel and they'd take these kids to a let's just call it a stash house, mm. a satanic home, where they would be ritually abused, where they would be forced to kill um, infants, where they would be forced to consume <coughs> them. They gave accounts, very vivid accounts, of all these things that they were forced to do, places that they'd been, and people who had been there, like the uh, lady in charge of the daycare, like the priest in charge of the church, like their dad, like the doctor, like the lawyer, like the judge. All these people were participating in this. She told the police where they kept skulls of infants that they had sacrificed that they would dance around with in their rituals. Wow. All of this stuff was coming out, and then the government took those children from their mother mm. and gave them to their dad. Wow. And I saw right about the time, um, let's say it was the election around 2016, where he had moved to California with those kids. Mm. So he could freely do what he wanted with them there because there's a big network there. I'm finding out about the tunnels, mm. not just under this country, but every country. Finding out whose equipment they use to dig those tunnels. And this guy's buying up uh, Twitter right now. Mm. And all I can say is everything that he owns really needs to belong to all of us because of the crimes against humanity. All right, I better get off that subject real quick. Mm. <laughs> but let's get back to where you were. And what, what were you seeing besides or up in reference to this revival what what was what is the lord telling you that we need to do besides war well the one thing that i do remember that i had impressed in my spirit was that what what god was showing me and some people may take this some way but but hear it first before you say anything what it is is this i heard these words as you see them do in darkness, 
so do you in the light. So we need to get a spiritual revival for Christ going. As you see them do in darkness, so do you in the light. Now, what was it that I... Now, is it meaning go out and sacrifice animals or people? No, no. that's not what I'm <laughs> saying. What I'm saying is, as you see them do in the light, so do in darkness. So, I'm... Yeah, so, switch that. Right, as you see them do in the darkness, do in the light. Yeah. Yeah. So what would they do in the darkness? Well, number one, number one thing that they had was unity. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. There's one thing. As they do in the dark, so do you in the light. So the unity. Unity was very important. Yeah. <clears throat> the unity is always important. I mean, they know about unity. They know about agreement. They oh, know yeah. about all this stuff. Oh, yeah. So unity is one thing. So as they do in darkness, so do you in the light, you know. Uh, that could be taken so many places. I can say so much about that. Yeah. But I think that it explains itself. As they do in the darkness, so do you in the light. No, you're not going to go cast spells. In other words, what you're going to do is you're going to pray. You're going to pray prayers uh, of warfare to um, counterattack the attack of darkness. Right. right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Shut them down. They're hurling darts and arrows at me. I'm throwing up shields to block them, right? And if they're putting up shields to block incoming arsenal towards them, then now I'm going to plunge forward with my sword, right? So, like, you know, I mean, you're you're defending yourself, so you're already in a mode of defense. So I'm going to continue with the offense, and I'm going to continue to bombard you. Yeah. So, as they do in darkness, so do in light. Uh, this was the real major thing that I had got my takeaway from having... Um, been led to watch that whole series as, as they do in darkness, so do in the light. And so I have made it my goal since I had heard that, received that prompting to, um, uh, as they do in darkness, so do in the light. And I fire prayers towards heaven so that answers get thrown towards earth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let's see. There was something else I wanted to ask you about. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you're fine. You got something, no. something to say, please. <laughs> well, okay. I remember. Our biggest problem <clears throat> as Christians nowadays is we've been taught by Satanists who have infiltrated the churches and distorted mm -hmm. the Word of God mm -hmm. and made the church buildings um a theater yeah mhm mm and i remember a long time ago we talked about this when i had the forum on my last website fountain mm -hmm. art studio that if i had a church like here in a building i wouldn't be passing around a hat or a collection plate right. I would put on the bulletin board, this is the rent, this is the gas, this is the water, this is so-and-so's need, this is so-and-so's need, and this is so-and-so's need. And if anybody felt led by God to give something, I, they could fulfill this person's need. You mm -hmm. know, if they needed help with their electric or their water or their rent or their mm -hmm. food or mm -hmm. clothes for their kids, whatever the need... You know, it's there. You you take care of that directly. You don't come into this building that I've got mm -hmm. and give me money. Because mm -hmm. my word of God says, freely you have received, freely you give. Not freely you've received. So take 10% of what everybody that comes in there has. Um, go buy yourself some nice clothes, some really expensive shoes, a good car, a plane. Because you're going to want to go on vacation and evangelize everywhere. Right. Um, it doesn't say that. Right. And I remember one of the people said, oh, that's not biblical. I'm like, well, what's not biblical about you don't give me your tithe. You give it to God in whatever form he says to give it. He didn't say you go into a church and you give that, that pastor in that building your 10%. <laughs> he said you give it into his kingdom. Yeah into the body of Christ. Now, if you see that the the rent on the building is $300 a month and you want to give 
10% to that, that's fine. Or you want to give $20 to that and maybe $20 to the electric and, and $50 over here to Katie Smith because her kids need shoes for school or, or they need school supplies or, or she, she needs a new tire for her car to get to work. That's the kind of thing that God wants us to to pay into in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Not not so Jesse Duplantis can take his whole company to Hawaii and buy his wife ten twenty five hundred dollar purses because he prayed that they would come in so he could bless her. Well, you know what? Ten twenty five hundred dollar purses would pay for Ten people in that church to have twenty five hundred dollars worth of their debt paid or their needs met. Right. And and it's just not right that an evangelist or a pastor is taking all that money from people who have needs and he has none. Mm. But I mean, if you look at these churches. The testimony that I got from one of the young ladies we've known for years was that her grandma was a respected woman in the church. Mm. She gave lots of money to the church, so the more money she gave, the more they respected her. But in the meantime, she's having affairs with men and women in the church, mm trying to turn husbands and wives against each other, friends against each other, bring down the pastor because she's a satanic high priestess and it's her job to infiltrate the church. And they know the word of God better than most Christians mm -hmm. because they use it against Christians. But now that same young lady that gave us that testimony, she said when she decided she wanted to give her life to Jesus, she couldn't see any words on the pages anymore when she looked at her Bible. Mm. Because the demons were keeping her from seeing the truth of the word. Because that's what she wanted. It wasn't until she went through some deliverance with us that she was able to read that. Mm -hmm. And really try to give her life to Jesus. And let me tell you, those demons, they fight so hard to keep somebody from getting loose. Because I went to her house and I drove for two hours around a mountain because I kept getting sidetracked mm. from where I was supposed to be. Finally, I pulled over by where something was on fire and there were fire trucks and I called her and I said, okay, this is where I am now. Can you find me? Mm. So her husband came and found the fire trucks and I was like, you know, four minutes from their house. But they had sidetracked me so much to try to keep me away from her. Mm. And when I got to her house, there was a guy there that was totally a demonic assignment staying at their house. And when I questioned him about a few things, he says to me, are you ready to drink from this cup? And I looked at him and mm. I said, I only drink from the cup of the Lord. I don't know what you're talking about, but I want no part of it. And God will have those that are his, and he will deal with those who try to stop it. So then we went up to a pizza place to get some subs, and it was just one of those small pony kegs that had a pizza place in it. Within 10 minutes while we were waiting there, there must have been 100 people come in that place, and they were all staring. Wow. And she's telling me, these are all the Satanists from the neighborhood. I just prayed in the spirit the whole time, and they stayed as far away from me as they could. Mm. And then she drove me past the house that she grew <laughs> up in, where she said her dad would put her and her siblings underneath in the crawl space with the snakes and the spiders and rats and things and leave them there for hours where he would put her on stools and hold guns to their heads and tell them if they moved he was going to blow their brains out mm -hmm. they cut open a cow during a sacrifice and shoved her into its guts and they held it closed 
And she had to fight her way out. When she got out, they told her she was born again into Satan. Mm. And this is the kind of brainwashing that they do to these children in these satanic cults. And, I mean, she was, when she was in high school, her Mm. grandma bought her a car when she brought the daughter of a lawyer into the cult as a breeder. She treated her so badly that this girl would do anything to be accepted by her. And then she got her hooked on drugs, brought her into the cult, and she became a breeder. So Mm. her grandma got her a car, a brand new car. Mm. And this is the stuff they do. Mm -hmm. Now, there is redemption. Jesus, Jesus said that all who call upon his name shall be saved. And she did, and she was saved, and she was set free. <coughs> and the only thing that you're not going to be forgiven is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Brian, what, what's your definition of blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Uh, mm, my definition of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Basically, if I were to say if a person says that they have no need for God in their life or this, that, or the other, um, I guess, I don't know if I have a real big definition. I just know internally what it means, really. Um, I keep looking back to the scripture where... uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were there and they said that he cast out demons by Beelzebub. Mm -hmm. And that's where he said that you'll be forgiven every sin except blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so in my mind, there's lots of things that go through my mind about that, but one of the biggest is You don't say that something that the Holy Spirit has done is done by Satan. Hmm. So not calling good evil or evil good kind of thing? Yeah, like deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we can see something and, and think, oh man, that's the devil. When in reality, it's God allowing something to happen in order for something greater to come about. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you have to, I go back to Job a lot. You know, Job was a great man, a godly man. And Satan's like, yeah, well, you know, take your protection from him and he'll blaspheme you. And so God gave Satan permission to try Job. Mm-hmm. But told him, you can't take his life. So, you know, his kids were doing bad things. Mm-hmm. They were doing sacrifices and stuff. And so the devil took all them out and killed his crops and put boils on his body. And he would not blaspheme God. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't curse God. He wouldn't blame God. So then he had all these friends coming in saying, oh, well, you know, you've done some really bad stuff, so you might as well just curse God and get it over with. Let him kill you. Those are the miserable comforters. I get a lot of those. Tell me to put on my big girl pants. Mm. I got my big girl pants on. How about some compassion? How about some consideration, some empathy? But these people are telling Job, just curse God. Curse God and die. But Job didn't. Job understood that God is God. And there are certain things with God that are never going to change. Like, his word is true. And he said, if I give my life to Jesus, if I believe in Jesus, if I love Jesus... If I ask him to come into my life and be the Lord of my life and be my savior, that he will. Mm -hmm. 
And whatever happens after that, I will live and not die. And having died twice, I know that I lived. I didn't even know I was dead until I came back to life because I was in the presence of God immediately. I was there with Jesus in the green pastures beside the still waters. And the warmth that I felt in this place was the warmth of his love everywhere. So I know these things are true. So I know when I'm rear-ended and I can't walk for 18 months and I'm in physical therapy twice a week and the chiropractor twice a week, that this is not God punishing me. Mm -hmm. That this is me being tried. And the last thing my physical therapist remembered me saying to her after my first accident, I gave her a fishing statue that I'd made in ceramics, and I told her, thank you for everything you've done. I don't need you anymore. Jesus healed me. Mm. So when I got in another rear-end accident and went in, she saw the x-rays, and what they had treated me for beforehand was healed. Mm that they said would never be healed except with some surgery. Well, There was another issue this time, but she knew what she was dealing with this time. <laughs> she was going to get me on my feet and Jesus was going to heal me, <laughs> mm -hmm. which he did. <clears throat> so, you know, maybe all that happened so she'd find faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. So my doctor would find faith in Christ so that they'd be strengthened. I mean, everything that happens to us happens for a purpose. Right. Like when we all got COVID back in November, December of 2019, before it was known, that helped bring an immunity up against what was getting ready to come because the second wave and the third wave were stronger mm -hmm. because they were... They were being uh, broadcast through the air. Oh, that's man on his tractor out back. <laughs> through those sky trails. But you know, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, that's what the devil wants you to do to lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. Because I believe you can. You can turn away from it. I mean, look at all these people in Hollywood that all these, all, especially the people in the music industry, a lot of them came from being gospel singers mm -hmm. to walking around in practically no clothes and singing about doing evil things. And you know that during all that stuff, they've, partaken partaken that they partook mm -hmm. in uh, <clears throat> rituals and things and i mean you look at the the rock stars they're like yeah i sold my soul to satan and i have to keep my end of the deal well my philosophy on the whole thing is you can't sell something that doesn't belong to you mm. jesus christ died on the cross and paid the price mm -hmm. he owns the deed you just got to tell him you're good with it paid for by his own blood absolutely nothing but the blood of jesus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so for for people to tell you that they sold their soul it, it if they made some kind of deal they need to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I can't make a deal like that because you own the deed. Mm -hmm. You own the property. You paid the price in full for my life and for my death. And I repent of my sins. I repent of the sin of partaking in witchcraft and yes. rituals and, and satanic things and I mean, he says if, if we're faithful to confess our sins, we will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people need to realize. I mean, 
these people that have been wearing the little ankle bracelets in Hollywood, they have an opportunity to give their lives to Jesus and be forgiven. They may not have an opportunity to live long after that here on this earth, but you know, it will save them from spending eternity in hell. They can spend eternity with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jump down off that soapbox. Oh, you're good. <laughs> and uh, let you say a few closing words here before we close and go have lunch. <laughs> um, yeah, you brought up some really good points about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You, you explained it pretty good. I, I, I didn't have a and I understand it, and uh, yeah, sometimes I understand how I, I understand what it means to me. I don't have a working definition for it, but you explained it well. The whole description you shared about Job, I think that they really broke it down to make it really easy for somebody to understand what it means to, you know, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So I have to think that was a very awesome explanation that you just shared. That was great. Thanks, um, Brother Brad. Uh, any closing thoughts or words? I mean, Pray. I mean, there's so many things that I can talk about. Well, we'll and, do and another video. Be specific <laughs> about, you know, as an example, you know, I'm a believer now. I'm no longer, if I were to be talking in a situation, I'm a believer now. You know, I'm going to this church. You know, this, that, and the other things happening. All these things are going on. My life is under attack. I'm experiencing what I can refer to as warfare going on in my life. I, I've been in a church where I've been abused, um, treated disrespectfully, not really given an opportunity to serve in ministry. But, you know, I mean, I gotta be part of this church because, you know, everybody I know who serves God is at this church. So, you know, of course, you know, I'm spending time in this church. Well, I mean, if they're not preaching the Bible, if they're not preaching you know, salvation only through Jesus Christ, if they're not preaching about the blood, if they're not preaching about the cross, if they're preaching a bunch of phony baloney garbage, you might want to get up out of that, you know, uh, false church, right? I mean, if yeah. I were to be honest about it. So now, so now let's say post COVID, right? You know, the whole COVID pandemic, scamdemic, scaredemic, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever this thing is that you know, we as a world have gone through, um, you know, have left um, many people out of the church. Yeah. I mean, there have been a lot of people who, during the whole COVID lockdown scenario, uh, were not able to attend their church, a drive through church. Okay. I feel like that because that's, of... That's what they are anyway. <laughs> th that is what they become. Yes, you're right. Um, it's become nothing more than a... It, it it has become at, uh, uh, well I, I might be touching on some go ahead go ahead she's there, so I was gonna say it's about as it's about as asinine as taking a pagan holiday slapping Jesus on it and calling it a holy holiday to me it's about as asinine as that so you're talking about Ishtar now aren't you I, I'm I'm yeah. talking about I'm talking and, about paganism yeah. right like yeah we we can't take these holidays and like saying Jesus was born during Christmas. I'm sorry if you look at history, he wasn't born during the winter. No. So we slap a suit on, we slap a, 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 a brand of church on it and we call it happy holidays, come to our church, right? Like. Oh, one of my favorites is the, the harvest festival. What, it, isn't that like some kind of satanic holi high holiday? It's 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 all nonsense. What is it that I'm really trying to get at? What I'm really trying to get at is this. I'm not trying to bag on all that. I, I have my opinion. We'll do you know that in another video. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to say my opinion is right and your opinion is not right. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is is that we've been led to believe things to be a certain way when they really aren't. So here we are post post COVID. You know, so many people have not had the opportunity to go to the church. What has happened is, is that they, they they have gotten comfortable not having to go to church because of COVID. And so now that I'm not going to church, 
I've become lackadaisical. I've become lax in my relationship with God. And now I'm not doing things that I normally was doing when I had that kind of churchianity accountability, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there's no more accountability. You know, everybody's kind of gone this way and that way and are doing their own thing. Every so often they'll go to church or they'll jump from church, 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 jump from church, church, and continue to just go around and around and around and, and, and guarantee you that any, any ones that you go to, they're all going to be about the same thing. They're all about doing the same thing. And what am I saying by that? What I'm saying is, is that now that you're no longer in the church, now that you're post COVID, now that you're um, dealing with all these things, some real situation, life situations are coming around and you're really starting to find out what warfare is all about. Yeah. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. That's happening. That's happening. All these things are happening. And now you're not sure what to do about it. Yeah. I'd say, well, number one, welcome to warfare. Now this is your proving ground. Yeah. All those things that you had been taught in your churches and in your assemblies of worship, all those things about warfare, all those things about the armor of God, all those things about praying in tongues, all those things about casting out devils, all those things about praying in the spirit, all those things about worshiping, all those things about praising. This is now your proving time. This is now where you, as the saint, where you, as the child of God, takes all those things that you've been learning about who you are in Christ and putting them into action and warring a good war, fighting a good fight, Amen. And, and being empowered to do so and not having to depend on Pastor What's-His-Name or Prophet Bucketmouth or Apostle Doodad or Evangelist <laughs> What's-His-Face. I mean, now we are doing these things because we have a relationship with our God through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Uh, speaks to us, inspires us, empowers us, uh, always leads us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always going to testify about Jesus. Amen. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, right? So I don't need for myself, I'm speaking individually, I don't need to go to a church. I don't need to go to an assembly. I don't need to go to a place where, you know, they all believe the same way to have this relationship with my creator. I don't need to do all these things to have that relationship because here's the reality. If I have my relationship with God so established and so strong, there is no lack of church or there is no uh, absence of church that is going to keep me from continuing to build and grow in my relationship with God. And if you haven't grown in your relationship with God, because you haven't been in church, that should be a good indication to you that if I haven't grown because I'm no longer in the church, if I haven't grown the way you have expected to grow, then chances are you weren't really growing there to begin with. Right. Because if, if that was your God, if that was your Savior, then you would, by all rights, have all the telltale signs of growth because that is your point of growth but that is not our point of growth the church is just a place where you can gather together with other people who are of like mind of like faith and share in your spiritual fellowship yeah is it necessary sure it's necessary but i don't believe that the church building as we have known it to be is what the church is all about the church is not what we know as church is not what the church is all about yeah church is the Ecclesia or the Ecclesia, the right. called out ones, the ones that have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light, right? Yeah, like, yeah. so we've been called out of darkness. So why would we be called out of darkness in one place to be put into darkness in another place right. and call that light? Yeah. I'm sorry, you can't call what somebody is doing in darkness, uh, darkness, and then call what you're doing and what you're saying is light, which is darkness, light, if the same darkness is the same. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I said a whole lot there, and but uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at to uh, narrow it down is that um, now we are at the point, what do I do now that I don't have the church to run to, that now that I don't have 
pastor what's his name in my you know yeah. quick dial here right like they're busy with their own set of you know trials and tribulations you know uh, I, I really think that we are in a point in time now that the uh, separation of the sheep and the goats and the wheat and the tear and yeah. all this stuff is starting to really happen yeah. and we have seen and are seen in different ways judgment has come to the house of God yeah and now if it comes to them how much more to them that believe not right and I think that this is where we're at and people are really starting to wake up believers and non-believers alike are beginning to wake up to the reality of the um, system of the matrix that we have been in. Um, and I guess if I were to summarize it, that's how I would summarize that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to say a prayer for us, Brother Brian? Sure. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that you have shed for us, and we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to empower us, to equip us, to inspire us. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to talk about the things of heaven. And uh, I'm asking, Father, that you would just touch hearts and lives today yes, that Lord. may have been in hearing of these words that we have shared today father i ask that you would take any of the words that we have shared that you have spoken to anybody's heart about today father and i ask that you would just by your holy spirit bring illumination to an area of darkness in somebody's life where they may need to uh, get right with you and father and i ask that you would just draw them to yourself through your son in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen.